In this video, we'd like to create a camera movement and continue to develop the artistic look of the shot. So we'll use a 2D transform for that. So let's go down to our bin and I'll take my 2D transform, which is right in the front there and hold Option Shift and feed that into the main output for our blur. Double click on the 2D transform and now you can see we've got our position, rotation, scale, and share, and so on. Even though it's a 2D transform tool, I just want to point out something. You can actually rotate this in Z space if you wanted to and manipulate it in Z space. That's not what I want to do, Control Z. But I just wanted to point out that it's a little deceiving the name of the tool. No, you're not in true 3D space here. I do have a Z parameter. Undo that again. What I'd like to do is the first five frames, I want it to stay exactly as it is. So I'll use my right arrow key to advance to frame five. And now I could turn on auto key, click in each one of these and choose enter and it will set a keyframe. But a great hotkey is holding the K key and clicking in a field that also sets a keyframe at the value that you're at. So I'm gonna do that for my position and I'll hold my K key again and click in all three of the scale parameters for X, Y, and Z. So now I've got keyframe set at frame five for position and scale, all three parameters. I'll click in this field right here that reads five, the current frame indicator. I'll enter 11, so we jump to the 11th frame. Now, because auto key is on, if I click inside any one of the scale parameters, I can enter 110 and all three of them will have that same value. For my X position, I'll click in the field and enter 60. And for my Y, I can just click and drag and set it to a minus 35. And I'll jump forward, let's go up seven more frames. So I'll go to 18. I'll hold the K key again. I want to hold this value for all of these. So I just click in all the fields while holding down the K key. So now we're holding the value of those parameters from the 11th frame to the 18th frame. And I'll jump to frame 24. And I'll just take my X position to 45. I'll set the Y position to negative 30 for a slight little bit of movement. And that's it. So now we've created a slight camera movement to add more dimension to our shot. But now that I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if his skin tone isn't a little too warm or bright for the shot. So I'd like to play around with the color correction that we did earlier, but I want to again be able to see the context that we're looking at. So I'll right click over our 2D transform and I'll choose set as context 2. Then in this viewport, I'll hold spacebar and hit the 2 key, which sets that to our context 2. And now let's pan back over here by the guy. And it's this color warper that we used on the guy. At the master level, we used the gamma, if I remember correctly, yes. And you can see we've adjusted the gamma midtones and the highlights. I'm gonna take the midtone point, start dragging this down. Now that I see it within the shot, I like that better. So, so I think we had the midtones a little too high and a little too warm for this. I'll also take the highlight and drag it back over to the right a little and down a little bit. I think that looks a lot better. All right, let's go now back to the end of our comp here and continue working on this. I'll set this viewport to be F4 and then I'll select our 2D transform once again. Okay, we're almost done with our comp. There's a couple other things I'd like to do. I would like to create a artistic blur effect and then do a color tint to seal the scene together. So to do my blur effect, I wanna use a couple different blurs. I wanna use a Gaussian blur, but I also wanna use a directional blur. And I wanna isolate mainly the highlights or the bright areas of the scene to create the blur on. So to do that, we go back to our tools. I'll drag a 2D histogram into the scene. I wanna take the comp we have here prior to creating the light wrap and so on and feed that output into my 2D histogram. And I'll double click on my 2D histogram. And I want to take my black and just really choke this in. Then I'll take my whites and drag this to the right to start to isolate the highlights on his face and this background. Now, before I put the blur tool, I want to add a clamp node because we're working in 16 float because our blur will have a different result if we leave it as it is. So let's come down to our tools. I'll hit the C key, take a clamp tool and just add it after the 2D histogram. I'll leave out of range clamped. And then we go back to our tools. We get another blur tool. I drag it out and I'll connect that after the clamp. Double click on that blur and we'll increase the amount. Let's take it up to about 33 for both the height and the width. And we're gonna leave the set type to Gaussian. I'll right click and duplicate that blur and then I'll attach it with option shift 
to that, double click on it, and click the reset button to set everything back to its default. I'll also turn off auto key so I'm not accidentally making keyframes. And let's switch our type to a directional. And now on the front settings for the length, I'm going to increase the length to about 91. Now I want to composite the end result of this blur with the end result of this blur and then feed it into our 2D transform. So once again, I get one more comp node. I drag it in. I'm going to set the new blur we just created with the directional blur as the front. And then I'm going to set the back as the original blur. Double click on that comp node and switch our blend type to screen. And now I can start to adjust the transparency to get the look that I want somewhere around 79 or 80. Then let's feed that back into our 2D transform. So I'll take the output for that comp and feed that into our 2D transform. Now let's add a color correction to seal everything together. So I'll go down to my nodes, I get another color warper, I'll bring that in, add it at the end after my 2D transform, double click on this. For my shadows, I'm going to drag the trackball and drag into blue just a slight amount, somewhere around 10 or 11, 12. And also my highlight, I'm going to take that into blue for a value of about 6. That gives a nice tint to everything. And if you want to, you can rename that color warper just so you know what it is. I'll rename this underscore B tint. And that's going to wrap this video up for now. The next video, we start looking at how to create a lighting effect with a lens flare inside an action tool.